Welcome to a clean tech news wrap up from Ecotricity and we begin with new EV models coming to our shores starting with Zika, the car maker, not the virus. As they're about to bring in the Zika X, it's a great little hatchback that I had the chance to drive in Sydney, which has flocked pillars and cool 70s interiors. Zika are also bringing in the 009 soon as well. It's a luxury people mover that's kind of like Emirates business class well, without the emissions, honestly, that interior has to be seen to be believed. It's pure class with massaging, adjustable everything. It's got a Yamaha 20 speaker sound system. It's posher than battery powered caviar, and I just can't wait to drive it. Another new entrant from China is the Geely Verizon Electric Van. I got to climb all through one at Everything Electric in Sydney. And what makes it different is it's got all the comforts of an SUV, like seated heats and a heated steering wheel. It's got ventilated seats, you name it. Plus, it weighs its own load with built-in scales, plus it's got onboard mains power. It's also available in a high top version, which could be great for camping. I mean, it's already got the room, it's got mains power. All it needs is a bed, a sink, and a shower, and it could be the ultimate freedom camper. Speaking of which, recent launches of new models also include the Volkswagen ID Buzz, which is nostalgia on wheels, and the official launch is fast approaching. We already know the price and the range specs of the different models, but soon I'll have the chance to get behind the wheel and see what all the hype's about. Now, as a confirmed tightwad, I'm not sure if it's affordable enough to be as ubiquitous as the Toyota Corolla, but it sure gets a lot of attention online, so maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll be the next big thing. We're going to find out very soon. Let's move on to clean tech news, in particular solar power. And we have a problem. A great deal of Kiwi firms installing solar farms can't keep up with the demand. Harmony Energy said recently that they can't get enough installers to meet the huge demand for solar now that Kiwis are figuring out how much money you can make off these things. Now, I recently went to a fresh new solar site in the Rangariri and I was blown away by how well it works, how it can still graze animals, and how they've made almost their entire year's worth of profit in less than three months due to the hydro lakes being low, meaning the spot price or trading price of electricity has become high. Take it from me, after installing solar on my own roof, my last four power bills have been around minus 130 bucks. I've never had a power bill go backwards ever until I installed solar panels on my roof. For the first time in my life, I'm getting paid to use electricity, to run the dryer, to charge all the manner of electric cars that are in my driveway. It's just mind blowing. And this is possible with basic off the shelf stuff that you can buy today and you can put on your roof today. Seriously, check out that video I made showing my solar install in an increasingly cynical world. It's nice that there are still some things out there that are as good as the hype, especially considering his solar panels have fallen in cost by around 90% in the last decade. Look, I know this sounds like a sales pitch, but I don't care which installer you use, which company you use, just promise me if you do anything today, get at least one free quote for solar panels. Look, I'll be quiet now, but seriously, solar has become so cheap that financially it would be crazy not to put it on your roof. Just be warned, if you do put panels on your roof, you could become as insufferable as me, telling all your friends and family how much money you're saving. Let's talk public events and April saw Electricana arrive to Topo, and I love this event. It's mostly just enthusiasts gathering to show off their cars to the public. There's always some interesting machines on display. In fact, I took my own project car there on a trailer as part of a towing test video with the BYD Shark 6. That's a video that was released just a week ago, so be sure to check it out. I also got the chance to wander around and talk to some other EV enthusiasts. It's just a great event, and I can't wait for 2026. Another clean tech event you won't have to wait long for is Everything Electric, which is coming back to Australia this year. This time, it'll be in Melbourne on the 14th of November. Honestly, the Sydney show was, it was so good, I'm definitely going back, so I'll see you there. There's so many cars to test drive, so many great people, such a passion for clean tech. It all just costs less to own, it brings you so much joy, it's no wonder that even former petrol heads like me just love it. I should add though that if you are new to electric vehicles, there's a video I made last year that's never been more relevant. It's a plain English how-to video showing you how to charge an electric car. Now, this might sound simplistic, but I'm still hearing some people say that they're fearful of upgrading to electric because they just don't know how to charge an EV. Of course, EV drivers watching this might be thinking, what, it's as easy as plugging in your phone, but not a lot of people know that. They're new and they're different, so a little uncertainty is understandable, but that's what this plain English charging video is all about. I run through all the ways you can charge an electric car, how long each option takes, and how much each option costs. Now, I know I'm biased because I've converted from petrol to electric years ago because 
well, they're quicker, cleaner, cheaper, faster, better, blah, blah, blah. But it's also really a useful video, so I'll put a link to it below. If you're thinking of going electric, check it out or pass it on to someone who could use it. Next up, let's have a quick look at new charger install locations around New Zealand. Plenty of new charger installs going in courtesy of ChargeNet, who are New Zealand's biggest charging operator. And they're also a really great bunch of kind people, and you know, that matters to people like me. They've now installed more than 400 rapid chargers around the country, with more going in each month. In fact, in April alone, they switched on two new rapid chargers at Pack and Save Petoni, with two 200 kilowatt units, allowing four cars to rapid charge at once. Christchurch has also got more rapid chargers north of the city, with the switching on of two new 150 kilowatt dual chargers at the Northwood Supercenter. The more the merrier. Nice one, charging it. Next, there are a few interesting EVs worth checking out, which are now available in the New Zealand market, starting with a very quick station wagon. Yes, I was the first in the country to drive and review the painfully stylish Audi S6 e-tron Avant. It's the first proper electric estate car in the country. There's only one problem. They glued the steering wheel on the wrong side of the car. Yeah, be sure to check that video out as it is a breathtaking car and great fun to drive. It also charges very fast and does up to 623 Ks on a single charge. And also it'll get to 100 Ks an hour in under four seconds, or does it? That's the point, you've got to check that video out, it's worth it for my dad jokes alone. Next up is the Mercedes G-Wagon. It's the G-Wagon we all know and love, or in some cases loathe, and I got the chance to take one on a proper review and road test. Turns out this Borg cube on wheels is surprisingly fun to drive. The video is already online and it's making entertaining viewing, even though it's a bit out of my price range, but not only is it massive and fast, but because it's got four independent electric motors, it's mind-blowingly good off-road. And it even does tank turns. You might have also seen the recent video I did on the new electric fire truck at Christchurch Airport. The first electric airport fire truck in the Southern Hemisphere. It is such a cool bit of kit and it makes so much sense. Now, I won't lie, at first I just assumed that it was purchased primarily to reduce emissions and to eliminate the fuel costs, but after climbing all over it and talking to the operations manager at Christchurch Airport Fire Service, electric fire trucks just make so much more sense from a practical point of view. I mean, there's so much more storage space, they're much quicker to get to the scene of a crash, and you could actually communicate while fighting a fire because they're so quiet. The fire team actually love it so much, they've ordered an even bigger one coming next year, so check that video out for sure. And lastly, it's time to tackle your questions and feedback, starting with the modern day library of Alexandria, also known as the YouTube comment section. And in the recent towing test I did with the BYD Shark Ute, I made a mistake. Yep, you told me about it. I stupidly said that road user charges were $38 per 100k for hybrids, when of course it's 38 bucks per 1000k. You only pay for your road user charges when you're driving on electric, which on a plug-in hybrid right now is only $38 per 100k. So if you're a tradie, so yeah, I'm sorry about that. Turns out there are three constants in the universe. There's death, there's taxes, and the internet telling you when you've made a mistake. Yep, that one's on me. I apologize. Sorry. Okay. It did make me wonder though if I should screw up more often because let's face it, if nothing else is great for engagement. One thing everyone loved in the comments section, however, was the clothes dryer running on the back of that ute throughout the video. That was such a literal clothes turner and a clothes turner. Also in the Audi S6 e-tron Avant video, it looks like everyone was in agreement about the looks of the vehicle. It's just such a great looking machine, but yeah, it's expensive. $200,000 for a car is out of my price range, but it is a gorgeous, quick, quiet machine. It's such a treat to drive. Although, one user said that quiet is going to be a boring future reality, but I'm thinking, what's wrong with quiet? Imagine walking down the road and hearing tire noise and bird song. Speaking of which, e trucks have been busy testing their new electric Windrose big rig by driving it all over the North Island, towing a load. These electric trucks have been tested doing more than 670 kilometers on one charge in China while towing 49 tons of total weight. And they're coming to a highway near you. Like, imagine a fleet of these things going through your town instead of a fleet of, well, what we have now. But we're running.
running out of time. So that's it for this clean tech news wrap up. And this is likely to be the first of many. So if there's something you'd like to see covered, tell me. Chuck it down in the comments and I'll see if I can squeeze it into the next video. Until then, drive safe, drive clean, drive electric.